uh, we have uh, got to know about, oh, sometimes most of you have been data collectors where you've been, but we are going to understand the bigger perspective of it. We are going to understand how we can uh, customize most of the things that we are doing out there in the field in terms of data collection, in terms of analysis, in terms of reporting. Uh, what we are looking at today is going to be smart surveys, and, and I want that to be the takeaway from uh, today's engagement out for today's discussion. So uh, we are going to be uh, looking at uh, its comprehensive overview, and I can't say, or I can't explain enough that most of you know what SMART is. These are some of the abbreviations that we've always been using, or the abbreviations that we've always been having uh, uh, to use uh, whenever we want to uh, assign characteristics of uh, something being specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. For the relevant, sometimes people try to coin around with it, uh, calling it realistic as so and when it uh, it fits uh, the description of whatever activity that is taking place. So uh, what uh, is a survey? And we are saying when we are looking at surveys, uh, we are saying these are methods of collecting data where you're interviewing or you're asking a group of people specific questions uh, to gather that information and opinions uh, or feedback on a particular topic or a particular subject that uh, the researcher wants to understand or the researcher wants to find out. And the types of surveys, for example, here in Uganda, we have the Uganda Health and Demographic Survey, or what we call the UHDS, UHDS, yeah. No, it's the Uganda Demographic and Health Survey, so it is the UDHS, sorry. But also we have the population surveys that are done. For example, a census, a national census, is also an example of a survey but you also do a small, small surveys where people collect that data from you. Uh, uh, for people who are working in health facilities or health centers, there is what we call mass screening exercises. Uh, mass screening exercises, yeah, we are looking at door-to-door -door mass screening where people are going uh, from home to home, uh, trying to do a nutrition assessment, but also... Uh, Different different companies conduct these types of surveys. Uh, if, for example, people who are usually uh, on these platforms, the like YouTube, the Facebook, sometimes uh, a case to note, uh, at one point, maybe a video is shared to you, they will tell you, what do you think about the video that you, you're from watching? Okay, so they want to gather that information from you. They want to gather that feedback from you. Uh, and this will help them uh, in uh, developing uh, better ways to uh, serve you or to give you a better service, but also it will help them improve as an organization, as a company, as an entity. But also uh, in these surveys, let's not look at it uh, in the uh, commercial perspective only or at a wider perspective, but this also comes to, 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 to the assessments that we do even when we are in class whereby we subject you to exams, we subject you to uh, continuous assessments. We are trying to gather as much information from you as possible. This will help <coughs> us understand how the programming is supposed to be done and what things we need to change and what things we need to improve uh, thereby. And we are saying this is commonly used in the, the, the things that I've talked to you about, the decision-making, because now with this information, you have a bargaining card after doing a you have a bargaining card, you have the evidence to come out and tell people that this is what I found when I went and looked for this data. This is what I found when I went and asked for people to give me their perceptions of Restore Institute. This is uh, the, the, the kind of information that I got when I asked students who are, are learning how much they had got from the lecturer. Was the lecturer giving them the right content? Was the lecturer audible? Did the lecturer have a lot of... Uh, interruptions was the lecturer listening and on a scale of one to ten as we'll be seeing could you please uh, quantify it uh, and uh, as we'll be seeing there by so that being said we have defined what a survey is and now we want to understand why do we conduct a survey most of the questions um, um, sorry most of the information that is uh, in this presentation we will see that most of it uh, once you understand one it will just be building on to the 
other and that is where we want you to be as students that even if uh, we don't give everything that there is to give uh, with just a few bullets you people are very uh, knowledgeable and well understanding of the subject matter and you could build on uh, from there so one of the reasons why we conduct surveys is to collect data directly from the sources okay uh, point to note surveys allow you to gather feedback opinions or information directly from the target audience we are talking at uh, primary data and we understand that primary data is more essential than secondary data secondary data is reported data where you're viewing reports from health facilities and you understand that a lot of errors could come into play if we are reviewing secondary data for example someone did not uh, for people who are talk, talk, talking over measurements instead of someone uh, writing a seven someone wrote a one Instead of someone writing a five, someone wrote a three, and all that could uh, cause a lot of challenges. But uh, when we collect this data directly from the source, we get to understand actually even other other uh, things that we might not be able to access from secondary data. So that will also uh, give you the, the, the relevant information that you need and also those specific insights when you go into the, 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 the community to do these surveys, but also, uh, there is a case to note when uh, one of the surveys was being done, as a survey was being conducted, it, it informed a lot of decision making that it became an early warning system. That's why people started doing the surveys uh, every now and then or uh, regularly. Also want to understand, for example, if we are in the business perspective, we want to understand the customers or the stakeholders' needs. And we are saying by surveying a group, you can identify their needs, preferences, what they expect from you. But also uh, this will help them improve on the products like I had mentioned and also the services. But also uh, this will help them uh, re-strategize. Uh, quantify opinions and trends. Here we are saying, uh, why are you doing this survey? This will enable us to measure how much, okay, a certain opinions, uh, what are the behaviors, okay, what are the trends within a population. Uh, providing quantifiable data for the decision making. Like I told you, uh, when, 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 when uh, we had a meeting sometime back with the National Planning Authority, the, the Whatever question you asked, they would say the, the only reason, the only way we are going to do this is by surveying how many, how how many people, or what is the number, the total number of population that is in that particular area that is going to be benefiting from that service. How many people are going to be targeted by that particular program? It, if it is a parish development model, how many people is it going to be targeting? Uh, I should say. Also, we are looking at uh, it being cost effective and scalable compared to other research methods like uh, the focus group discussions or interviews. We are saying these surveys can be administered to large audience at a relatively slow, slow low cost, for example, online or in person. Most of us have had uh, uh, surveys that have been submitted to us by SurveyMonkey or uh, even Kobo Collect, uh, people have been uh, submitted uh, their responses through Google Forms. All these are online platforms that are now making it easier for us uh, to conduct these surveys and also reduce on the cost that these surveys take. But also, like I had said, and I won't uh, fail to re-emphasize this, decision-making is always key. These are results that we get from the, 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 the data that we get uh, from conducting these surveys, uh, they will provide the data-driven insights that help businesses, researchers, or policymakers make informed decisions <laughs> and shape a future strategy. You can look at the trend of which things are taking by conducting a survey, and you will understand that people are not consuming this drink if, for example, we are in business, or if we are a restaurant, or if we are uh, maybe, even, even when it comes back to health, if we are having two uh, two interventions and we are seeing people are going for an intervention more compared to the other intervention if at all that intervention is not harmful then why not for example i think i will use an example of condom uh when, when you look at a survey uh, female condoms are not uh taken up okay so that even doesn't need for us to, to, to understand that we should put more emphasis on having male condoms to prevent uh, transmission of HIV. Because, okay, 
female condoms are there, but no one uses them. And uh, they prefer to use other options uh, when uh, having uh, intercourse. Okay. Then also we are looking at tracking changes over time. Conducting these, tra these surveys uh, periodically can help uh, track uh, opinions. Things change. Okay. These act as our uh, alerts or our alarms or alarm systems. They think when things change, we, it will always help us. If we surveyed last time and we found maybe 50% of the population was malnourished, then if we survey again and still find that 70% of the population is malnourished, then we will have to understand that maybe things are not going on well. If it is in the business line, if, uh, for example, we are seeing that uh, now people no longer want to, to, to for example, uh, get movies on discs, okay? People usually now want to have the movies uh, on flashes or people want to have the movies sent to them maybe and they download them from the cloud, something like that. So this will help us uh, in monitoring the trends and adjusting uh, the strategies of our businesses accordingly. Like I said in the beginning, uh, that uh, brief was about why do we conduct surveys and what the survey is. But now we are going to be looking at a specific way of uh, having this SMART uh, acronym uh, being entailed there. In. So SMART, like I told you, this stands for uh, specific. And when we are talking about specific, we are talking about uh, uh, clearly defined and focused questions. Whenever we are talking of surveys, still we are also talking about just questions as uh, if if someone is talking about a survey in most cases let's i think of it as a, a question a question answer question answer you're getting a, a, a response from a second party or a third party okay uh, so we are also talking about measurable questions uh, that can be quantified or assessed. And uh, I think this, uh, you people will have another engagement where we'll be looking at how uh, to assess uh, most of this through the analysis bit, that even if uh, we are being given information qualitatively, if it is a yes, no, yes, no, we can always code these and measure them. Achievable, we are looking at questions that are feasible to answer and relevant to the uh, survey goals. So you're not uh, putting questions out there, for whatever you feel that uh, you want to understand. But if they are achievable, then obviously you're also making these questions a little bit smaller and a little bit straight to the point. Uh, question, uh, we are also looking at questions being relevant. Here we are looking at them directly addressing the research objectives that you might have listed earlier. Timely questions must be asked at appropriate time to capture the desired information. Timely approach uh, in this uh, smart survey is very essential as we'll see that some, some surveys we can't do them beyond a, a specified uh, period of time because after that period we will be getting different data for example if it's a 24-hour record a 24-hour record we want to understand what are the foods that that person has eaten uh, in the past 24 hours we, we we want to do it immediately uh the time will, okay for example you're making the time frame of when you want that information what what information do you really want so that you can understand oh this person had this in the previous 24 hours okay and they're not giving you everything so that they give you a uh, wrong information okay so what are what is the evolution of these smart surveys uh the evolution we had the traditional surveys that lacked focus and clear metrics where everything was just being collected okay that makes it difficult to derive actionable insights so you're asking some Someone about livelihood, you're asking someone about wash, you're asking someone about nutrition, you're the same person act asking someone about protection, gender based violence, and it is one individual that you're interviewing. That is why the National Housing and Population Census is a little bit tricky. That the, the government then starts to de subdivide it and have a UDHS, then they have uh, also some other smaller, smaller surveys that could be coming in uh, there. I don't know whether we've got a post-COVID survey, 
But I think that is something they're also looking at a post-pandemic survey to understand the, the, the impact. Because, you know, whenever these policymakers are, are, are seated, for them, they only look at what do they think that, that people really want. But at the end of the day, if we talk to the people directly, they can always give us insights that we might not have taken into consideration. So smart survey is evolved as a structured approach to maximize the value of the data that is being collected, okay? Not being all over the place, but being uh, a, a little bit direct to the reason why we are here. Uh, growth in the digital survey tools is one of the reasons uh, that led to this evolution. Uh, platforms like Google Forms, SurveyMonkey, Typeform, uh, Kobo Collect, uh, a lot of them, they are out there, you could uh, use them. This facilitates uh, the creation Sorry. <clears throat> we are saying this facilitate the creation of smart surveys, incorporating measurable metrics and time-bound objectives. For example, if uh, one of your uh, tutors, if you ask one of your administrators how they mark your assessments, this time round, it's not that the, the it's not that they 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 they, 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 they do the traditional way, but then every answer you, you make it scores itself automatically. So it makes it it makes life a little bit uh, easier. So what are the key components of a smart survey? We are looking at clear objectives, okay? Defining clear objectives, like we had said, is essential because now whatever you're going to, to do in this uh, smart survey assessment is going to be determined by the objectives that you had set earlier. Okay, the target audience is also key. Targeting, that means you're going to be a bit specific. If you're looking for pregnant, you're looking for pregnant alone. If you're looking for lactating, you're looking for lactating alone. If you're looking for customers of a restaurant, you're looking for only those ones. If you're looking for school going children, you're looking at only those. Then also the survey design, as we will see. Then also distribution and also data collection and analysis is really key. Uh, in this is where well, people get a lot of problems. And people who really want to make some good income, however much uh, the, the, the AIs have come, a lot of uh, uh, people are now willing to invest a lot in this data analysis because data is money right now. If you understand that people are in a data mining business, the raw information that you share over the internet, someone is making money out of it, as small as just you sharing your email. Because you can, from the email that you, you give to us, your Google account, you can already see which sites do you frequent most. And if you're frequenting uh, maybe uh, sites, for example, Amazon, you're going to eBay, then even through eBay, we can understand what are those products that you are viewing. So data collection and data analysis are really key, and they are making uh, lives change out there for people who are able uh, to maximize with them. So what are the best practices of creating smart surveys? One, we are saying using a simple language. Don't make things complicated when we come to uh, smart surveys, okay? And since we are saying that we are looking at a targeted audience, we believe that that audience understands whatever we're doing, okay? Uh, the, the audience, if the audience is of doctors, then you're free to use whatever terminology you want to use from the medical perspective or the medical point of view. But if you're talking to women, talk as a, uh, whatever question it is, make it sound as simple as possible so that people can give you honest opinions. You Developing actually these survey questionnaires, uh, really sometimes people sit down in, in, in panels, okay? Uh, one has been developed of our endline survey this evening. We were developing an endline survey on the beneficiaries that we were having. So a group of us sat down and were looking at, okay, so uh, have the lives of the people that we've been supporting with these uh, different uh, nutritious foods improved? Something like that is what we are looking at. That is the major objective and a number of other objectives of our study. So what I'm trying to say is use the simple language as uh, call a potato a potato, call cassava cassava, don't call it money for Testulanta, uh, call, you know, whatever it is, use those common names that the people really want to know. Keep it short, okay? Don't be overly ambiguous. Don't put in a lot of words for these surveys. For surveys to work, if, uh, like most of you, are, and I believe most of you have seen most of the surveys that come with you on and even some of you have been paid for some of these surveys. Think, is it survey junkie that pays for surveys? 
they send your survey via email, then they pay you after you have completed that uh, email. Sometimes it is form of a small layer time. Sometimes it is in form of uh, maybe small mobile money, but it is usually not a lot. Also, a pilot test, uh, it is very key for you to test it out on very few subjects before you scale it up or uh, scale it uh, outward to other uh, beneficiaries because this will help you understand the different dynamics. For example, if it is with the research assistants, if it is with the data collectors, what needs to be changed? And actually, you might even have to have these data collectors at the very beginning as you're training them, they're also helping you to improve your questionnaires in this survey, providing incentives this I've mentioned, that once you're doing this, and the problem is incentives, everyone thinks about the financial bit of it, but an incentive could be uh, something that is uh, small, it's something that makes someone feel better. Even if it is just a token of appreciation, that could be could mean a lot to an individual. Okay, even if it is just a mission. For example, some people doing a survey, they could say, okay, since you with you, they could also say that in case a report comes out, we could put your name uh, maybe in part of the people that participated in this survey. So those things are really motivate people to give their all in responding to your survey questions and your survey ideas. So what are the applications of this smart survey? In the business sector, we are looking at customer uh, satisfaction surveys. These you've seen on the different commodities that you people purchase, okay, where you're having smiley faces, a small smiley face then you have a frowning one and a scale of one to ten did you feel satisfied did you feel less satisfied and it is but also we have employee engagement assessments okay in the business sector how do you feel about the leadership how do you feel about the tutors uh, of Risto Institute? How do you feel about the administration? Do they respond to you uh, in the way you really want to be um, responded to, I think that is uh, under the uh, education, where we are looking at the student feedback on the different courses. Are we just doing nothing or we are teaching good things that you already know? Uh, are you, uh, is there room for you to understand or is there room for you to go out there and explore on the data that we've given you? Or is are, you, are we giving you back dated information? Are we still giving you information that was uh, 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 last cited in 1998. For people who have done research, you understand that the, the, the more recent you use that data, the more credible uh, that research is. Okay. Yeah. For, so in the health and humanitarian aid, we are looking at the nutritional survey. This I have told you uh, here in we, we sometimes conduct the FSNA, which is the food security and nutrition assessment. Okay. Where uh, it is really a big survey. Uh, uh, where health workers and health assistants move with their tablets. I think the report is not yet out, but we'll be getting it. But also we have public health monitoring. Recently, we had uh, an engagement with the Ministry of Health, whereby uh, they are doing what they call technical support supervision. They no longer want to call it monitoring because monitoring looks as if you're coming to only do fault finding. So in this, uh, they come with a different... Uh, questionnaires, but basically uh, in my end, we're looking, focusing basically on the nutrition, but also it had a lot of other information to do with the health sector, looking at the catchment population, looking at the infrastructure of the different hospitals that we have uh, in the settlement and what services are being delivered, how, what is the quality of those services that we claim are being delivered, what is the number of staff that we are having, and ETC. Also, uh, we are looking at uh, the governance, public policy feedback, uh, where people have community barrazas, where they give feedback to the duty bearers. This is more into the advocacy bit of it, that uh, the, 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 the politicians understand that the mandate is with the public or is with the populations. These are the populations that they serve. So in any attempt, they need to be getting information from the public to help them uh, understand. Because the, the, the failure, uh, for example, with most of our African states, something that almost happened in Kenya recently, it's because most of these people do not come back 
to the people. We understand that you as a politician, you're very bright, okay? You're very bright, you understand what you're supposed to do, uh, you understand where you want to take us, but maybe that is not our priority. We, the majority, we who gave you the mandate to be our leader, that is not our priority. Our priority is not saving, our priority is not spending, our priority could be reducing taxes on drinking. So if that is what we want, and it is the satisfaction that you need to give to us, then that feedback makes it crucial. And this feedback is also partly there on, on their uh, own, if, if I mean, because we put a number of candidates and people come to choose the best suited one. Also, these community development programs, we tend to have a surveys on these. Uh, how how far has the SAGE grant, the SAGE we are talking about social assistance grants for empowerment, uh, here in recently in Uganda we had that, but I think it's still ongoing, where the, where the uh, elderly above 75 are being given 20,000, 25,000, is it 25,000? Yeah, I think it is 20, 25,000 per month as uh, an allowance for old age, for growing old. So they are registered and being given this money to help them uh, with the different, different uh, challenges. And then with these people usually do uh, these baselines, they come to find out how much this money has helped them in whatever way. Uh, maybe it has helped them take their grandchildren to school. Maybe it has helped them with the uh, challenge, health challenges that come as people grow old. Maybe it has helped them start income generating activities. For example, people have bought a poultry. People have started doing a uh, small, small uh, IGS. Okay, so uh, what are the examples of these smart uh, survey questions? Okay, hopefully I'm not rushing, but also due to a time constraint, I'm going to be having some other engagement immediately after this one. That is why I'm trying to move a bit faster. So examples of smart survey questions, we are looking at specific. So one of them is how often do you use our products? Okay, that is an example. So the person is telling you you, you 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 want to understand. And this often, in most cases, you could go an extra mile and provide the options from which this person is going to choose from. And in those options, uh, usually, actually, even in the, the survey that we have been developing this evening, we are putting options. And then there is, if not specify, some, some kind of that. I think you will get that once it comes to you people developing uh, these tools, I should say. Also measurable, we are looking at a scale uh, from one to five or from one to 10, so that you're, you're trying as much as possible uh, to quantify this. Okay, how satisfied are you with our customer service? How satisfied are you with the tutors that you're having? And when we are looking at achievable, we are looking, have you experienced uh, any technical difficulties with our website? Uh, this still goes to you. And maybe sooner or later, we shall share a survey with the students because it would be a little bit more practical if we are having it and it will stick with us. Relevant, we are saying what features would you need to see added to our product? This relevancy is two-way. It could be relevant to you, the researcher, but also relevant to the person you're looking at, okay? To, but all this comes from the objectives that we set earlier on before we start conducting this survey or before even we start trying to come up with the questions in the questionnaires that we are going to be uh, giving to people out there. So timely, we are looking at when did you last purchase our product, okay? So a person who last used your product three months back won't give the same uh, answers like an, a person who has just recently used your product because it is still fresh on their mind. You understanding uh, the amount of time it has taken this person to use your product, or understanding that, that, that the, the time this person has spent not coming to class, it will help us ma uh, manage uh, the, the discrepancies that could come uh, with the responses that we'll be getting. For example, people who have not been attending class will always give a little less information, but I don't want to say it is not, uh, it, it's by design. They will, people always don't attend class, but at the end of the day, you will find them uh, having a lot of marks because they are putting in that extra work uh, elsewhere. But uh, usually uh, attending class is an indicator of a 
person being able uh, to remember a lot that has been shared during the session. Okay, so how do we design these uh, smart surveys? Okay, like I told you, first define the purpose of the survey or identify the objective, what you want to find out at the end of the day, then craft specific questions. And, and in this we are saying you should be a little more deliberate and intentional to ensure the clarity and also the precision of these questions. Okay, let them be straight to the point. Don't be meandering around. Okay, yeah, even if something is invasive, even if you're talking about uh, one of the most uh, topics, for example, if you're uh, having a questionnaire that you're, 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 being, you're subjecting to maybe married couples, it is about uh, uh, the number of uh, previous sexual partners a person has had. Okay. Sometimes it is very difficult, and uh, you, 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 the person you're asking it to is uh, uh, maybe a 60-year-old, uh, someone old enough to be your parent, but you're asking this. Okay, so this also takes us back to how are we collecting, how are we uh, uh, selecting, okay, our research assistants. Okay, some researchers, research assistants, uh, get a lot of good information because they usually resemble. The, the, the people they are getting this information from. We don't want to call it bias, but yeah, I mean, if I'm going to collect information uh, on the use of contraceptives uh, in, uh, I don't want to call them prostitutes. I don't know, should we get a better word? Uh, maybe escorts, okay, sex workers, let's say. Uh, it is the oldest profession, most of you know. So I'm not going to go with uh, a man putting on a tie Okay, uh, better I would go with our lady who has pierced her nose. Uh, okay, piercing the nose is even not that big because it is a tradition and it is now all over. But okay, you, you try to understand someone who is not overly dressed, okay, who is putting on a little skimpy thing that could always get us this information uh, basically. So we are looking at the clarity and in the clarity, for example, if you're talking to the Gen Z, use the terms that the Gen Z know. Don't start using your old information. You won't get the data that you, you require. Also determine measurable indicators using rating scales, uh, multiple choice questions, and also uh, quantifiable options. Uh, for example, for the multiple choices, uh, people can always choose as many as they can, but also they can have a feel of what other uh, options are there besides the option that you have given me. Uh, also, we are saying questions are attainable. Consider the audience's capacity to answer the questions. You don't submit a person to a survey with, uh, with questions more than, uh, I think it was a 70, is it, is it 75? I think 75 minutes, something like that. It's it's quite too big, okay, and it also depends on the people. You, I'm not going to spend the whole day answering the questionnaire, questionnaire that you come with, and the bigger the questionnaire, the bigger the incentive is supposed to be, okay? Sometimes people don't want to participate in surveys because at the, at the end of the day, they know most of this information, one, it won't be shared, okay? Uh, previously, with one of my lecturers, when I was... Uh, when I was uh, just starting to work, we were assessing something to do with the food service. We were looking at the hotels in, in, in Jinja district. Jinja district is a district in Uganda here. It was uh, about, about food service, food pre preservation, something like that. So we were looking at these different, different institutions, hotels, supermarkets, and etc. But uh, you would really find it very, very challenging and a little bit difficult to get a lot of attention. Because, I mean, you didn't make an appointment. You're just walking in with a letter introducing you from Ministry of Health, nothing more. And this person uh, is, is, is doing their own thing, okay? So we need to study uh, all that as we are trying as much as possible to have these surveys done and also ensure relevance to the goal. Align every question with the surveys purpose. Don't go meandering around, okay? As much as possible, we might have a lot of objectives that we want to hit, uh, hitting very many birds with one stone. Don't 
uh, be asking how did okay do be very straight to the point and precise and also uh, set a time frame establish deadlines for both the survey completion and the response collection okay in most times people want 40 minutes maximum 40 minutes okay for small small surveys it is 40 minutes actually even in the beginning uh what is it called when you're building rapport that opening statement that you have usually you actually communicate the amount of time you're going to take with a particular respondent or with the questions that they will be uh, you will be subjecting this individual to okay so what are the benefits of using smart surveys precision in data like i told you uh, here you will get once you're having some specific measurable attainable relevant and timely surveys then you will be getting precise data. Since it is uh, well-defined and specific questions lead to accurate responses, okay? You will also get actionable insights where this data will help uh, in formulating strategies, policies, and also other improvements that could come along the way. Uh, its efficiency, we are looking at uh, these surveys promote timely feedback. Okay, there and then you can know what to change on an intervention. There and then you can know which product needs to be uh, put first on the production line and which one should be given a less attention. Enhanced relevance. This ensures that only pertinent questions are being asked. Don't start asking uh, questions that you want and need to use. All right. Uh, challenges of smart surveys. We are saying however much we, 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 we want uh, the surveys to be smart, specific, measurable, but enable, uh, relevant, and time-bound. Uh, we tend to understand that this could come with a lot of some small hiccups if uh, we do not take in consideration on a few. So one is oversimplification. We could focus too much on making surveys attainable and overly simplify complex issues. Okay. And once you simplify, then that means someone is going to misinterpret. And once we misinterpret, one is going to jump to a conclusion. And once someone jumps to a conclusion, I don't know which one is the parent or the child or the other, misinterpreting, jumping to conclusions, we will get challenges with the data that we will be uh, collecting. Limited scope. Uh, strict adherence to these uh, smart criteria might miss out on a broader uh, and exploratory insights that would come in handy. But uh, rather you have the smart than have a lot of things that sometimes you won't use. That means you have wasted data, a survey that would have taken almost a week you're having to do a survey in a month because you have a lot of irrelevant information that could at one point be insightful. But I mean, if we have our objectives really set, then we can't do much with other, other data that we might be able to get response. Fatigue, time-bound and specific questions. If too many may lead to a survey fatigue, people don't want to be answering the same questions in the same line a lot. Okay, they need that little diversity. So it is about you, the person who is developing or designing this survey, to find a way that you could balance up and have a little more flexibility with the questions that you're asking uh, within the survey. All right. So what are the best practices? Test the survey. Okay, this I say you conduct a pilot to test uh, the clarity and the effectiveness of this survey. Keeping it short, uh, we are saying it is not too long and avoiding fatigue that we talked about. Uh, these incentives, they uh, encourage our respondents to complete the survey within the time frame that uh, we, we, we give them. That is, for example, this monkey survey that usually tells you that it is going to give you some. Uh, uh, maybe airtime, like I told you, but it will say once the survey is started, it needs to be completed in the next 20 minutes, or it needs to be uh, completed by the end of the day. I think that is a very junkie that usually does that. But also using data analytics, this uh, helps us to leverage on these softwares uh, for analyzing uh, of these uh, measurable uh, responses that we could be getting. So, how do we craft these? And once uh, we we, uh, we can't take you through how to craft them, but I believe by you looking at a lot of researches that are being done, by you being conversant or being very uh, intentional in looking at the recent questionnaires that you have been submitted to, uh, or I, I mean, the ones that have been 
uh, given to you or people have used on you, you can be able to understand what we are talking of. So in crafting this, you will also become a pro in understanding that, oh, I'm going overboard with this one. And never make a survey alone, unless you're going to use it in your backyard garden. Okay, But usually you need to have a group of people so that they provide you with things that you might have missed out or things that you feel are less important but are really key. What does attainable mean? Ensuring that response, respondents are capable of answering uh, questions without being uh, or feeling overwhelmed, okay? They're giving you the, only the information that they really understand and they uh, they, 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 they can be, uh, they, they are not having to think a lot to uh, provide this, this information. So how do we ensure this? One, avoid overly technical and complex questions. Break down ideas into smaller and digestible questions. For example, and I, and I used a few of these. Uh, a too complex question would be, how does our logistical framework influence your product procurement? Really, if you're asking this to even a person who is a land, even if I'm not your customer, I think I could walk away. Once you start using logistical, once you start using uh, those terms that are a little bit not common, they are words that we usually use in our day-to-day -day life. And those are the words that we want our surveys to have plenty of. No, these are things that you're getting from wherever. But attainable, we could say, was the delivery of your product timely and satisfactory? So you could say yes or no, okay? Instead of logistical. Logistical, we are looking at moving them. Now, me, who is a layman who doesn't understand what logistics is, what supply is, what supply chain is, yeah, I could I find it a little bit challenging. Okay, so these are some of the case studies. That was only about attainable, but we could look at also measurable. We could also look at specific, relevant, time-bound, and we will see most of those. So uh, these case studies will help us understand this a little bit better. For example, if we are having a smart uh, survey in a business, uh, the objective is to measure customer satisfaction. Remember I told you from the very beginning we need to define this. What do we? What are we looking for? Uh, the objective sometimes co is confused with the purpose, but well, most of all of them are really uh, point to why are we doing what we are doing. So specific questions. Uh, one is how satisfied were you with the cleanliness of the restaurant? Okay, yeah. So we are specific on cleanliness. So uh, uh, how when we are trying to measure it for measurable data, we are saying on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate our food? Is it a five? Is it a four? And then maybe you could ask a small question after the measure. Why? Why are you ready to get this? And they will give you insights on why they feel it is a five and not a seven. A trainable question is, was the menu easy to understand? Yes or no? Because really, these are really direct to you. Relevant uh, focus. How likely are you to return to this restaurant within the next month? And the person will tell you, mm, I don't think I'm willing to return because of ABC and the, and taking feedback is really key. For people who do not want feedback are those people who do not want to grow. But whoever wants to grow, even if it is after a small speech in public, go and ask for feedback, even from your colleagues, say, what should I improve? Is it stage presence? Is it audibility? Or is it the way I conduct myself with the expressions that I have? Time-bound approach. We are looking at a survey conducted over two weeks period to get actionable feedback uh, before the next review cycle. Okay, we want it to be maybe a baseline or to be an end line after a project and DTC. Okay, that is for the business. So an example of a case study for a uh, smart surveys in a, a health sector. Here we are looking at assessing the patient. Uh, experience in a hospital setting okay so how would you rate the friendliness of the nursing staff okay yeah during your stay we are not saying how how uh what is it called there is some forgetting what it is called but yeah really you get the, the idea so measurable using a rating or using a scale uh, for patient satisfaction metrics uh, on, an, on, on a scale of one to ten how likely are you to recommend uh, a person to this hospital Okay. How 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 likely are you to come back 
okay, how likely are you to come back for your next appointment? If it's a dental appointment, and usually I think it is these dental people that really need this. However, my, however, for people who go for dental services, really, you only go when the tooth is doing really bad. Okay, so uh, for attainable, we are looking at ensuring that the question uh, avoids medical jargon. And when we talk of jargon, we are looking at those complicated uh, questions that you have, okay? Was the discharge process clearly explained to you? Okay. Yes or no? Relevant. Only ask about the aspects that are related to the patient's care. How comfortable are you in your hospital room? You're not saying, how are all these rooms comfortable? Because the person has not been uh, to those ones. And we are saying uh, the time bound in this uh, way, we could talk of survey patients upon discharge and uh, with responses requested within five days of discharge. This is what uh, we got from a particular patient. These I can explain to you, but you could also understand according to how better you could craft it to fit the survey that you're going to be able uh, to conduct. And I see you people having better surveys and better questionnaires as time goes on. But then for the standard questionnaires, really there is not much we can do. Okay, Maybe if it is a household dietary diversity score, if it is a coping strategy index if it is uh, the nesto there is there is a nesto it is a mini assessment tool that uh, people use mini nutrition assessment uh, mna that people use to uh, get the nutritional status of the elderly yeah so for most of those uh, tools that have already been designed there is not uh, really uh, much but usually still there is always room for adopting or adapting as people usually uh, try to use the same words interchangeably. So best practices for implementing this smart service, plan before you write, identify the objective and tailor each question uh, to meet the smart criteria. Keep it short, keep it short, keep it short. That one have overly emphasized it. And pretest your survey, conduct a pilot, use digital tools. I think that has also been uh, said. Why do we? Uh, why do these smart goals matter? Okay, or smart objectives? These ones will help us in providing a clear direction and focus. Uh, they will uh, set measurable benchmarks in terms of accountability. We know that we were at this percentage last year, but then how far have we moved from that uh, to this year? Then motivation. Uh, this will help us even in the data that we are collecting, we are able to understand how far have we got. But also this will increase uh, the, 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 the likelihood uh, of getting uh, these meaningful results. Okay, so basically this is still broader and these are the final takeaways. Whatever we've said, we've talked about the SMART, at least go with the understanding of the SMART. But also uh, for the SMART, as wide as it is, and not only to the surveys, we are looking at it uh, for the goals, uh, for the goals as they are, this is more to the entrepreneurship team that we have. You begin by identifying key areas of improvement that you want to have a survey done and apply this SMART framework on them, breaking down each detail uh, in the same way the SMART, the specific measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Regularly review these strategies that you're using, review these surveys that you're giving. A survey that you used last year may not be uh, able to be used this year because a lot of things are changing. Prices of the commodities are changing. Uh, the cost of production is changing. The uh, demographic is changing. You had teenagers last year, but now teenagers are nowhere to be seen. People were able to come to your store. But now they are, they are, they are ordering. So colleagues said that is the last one I have for you. And, and I beg to end our engagement here for that day. Thank you very much.